by storming Bracken! What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is of course my review for Halloween Kills, which is a 2021 horror film. It is the sequel to the 2018 film Halloween and also a sequel of sorts to Halloween 1978. Now, these are the two Halloween movies that I consider to be really good. I've only seen these two and the Rob Zombie movies and, and obviously this one. So I've only seen five Halloween movies out of what, like 20? So keep that in mind when you hear my thoughts in terms of this movie and everything. But I can't lie, Halloween 2018, I liked the way it ended. In my review, I did say that I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but upon marinating and everything, I honestly did like the ending. I thought that it was satisfying, which is why when I heard that the news that there was gonna be a sequel, and not only that, but a sequel in addition to that one, and how they're gonna be filmed back to back, I was skeptical. I was like, okay, so the movie did really well, so now they're like, okay, let's make sequels. But at the same time, I started thinking about it too, and I was like, this is something that could be very interesting because when movies are filmed back to back, usually they are good. Look at Lord of the Rings. Now for every Lord of the Rings, we do have like the Matrix sequels, but lo and behold, again, my curiosity was up for sure, especially since pretty much everyone involved of Halloween 2018 was coming back for Halloween Kills. And the trailers did seem very heavy in terms of spoilers, but at the same time, I was also curious and the color palette, the score and everything, it did evoke those feelings of the 2018. So I, I was curious and I was going in with an open mind. And honestly, I did rewatch both of these literally the day before um, filming this review, which was obviously opening day. I have to say right off the bat, Halloween Kills, I was quite disappointed by it. Um, I, I was saddened by it, honestly. Um, but by, by the end, I, I, I kind of realized that I was disappointed. Like it started off where I was kind of like still kind of evoked at the fact that I was watching a movie, you know, that I was watching a, a Halloween sequel. Um, cause again, when the pandemic started, it was like, I was worried about movies. I really was, especially in theaters. So Halloween kills was a movie that I was like, okay, when it comes out, I know it's going to do well. And I'm hoping that I like it. So to slowly, feel that sensation of disappointment as the movie progressed, it it took a toll on me, I'm not gonna lie. But I will say not all is bad about this movie, for sure. There are some things that were pretty good, I would say, for the most part. I would say the standout has to be John Carpenter's score. Um, it's not as good, obviously, as the 2018 one, or even close to the 1978 one, but it's still a good score, for sure, and I definitely will listen to it uh, many times over. But I also thought that the um, sound mixing was pretty good for the most part. The score evoked with obviously the you know sound edits of like you know whether it's the knife or punching or throws can slit. It all worked really well. It was mixed very well, and I, I did enjoy that. Um, the performances when the characters are actually given stuff to do, the acting is pretty solid. I would say for the most part, there's nothing that's really stand outish in regards to it. But they get the job done for sure. Cinematography does have some nice shots. There are some really cool shots, honestly, that I did like. Um, but that's kind of a mixed bag. There were some things that I wasn't the biggest fan of in terms of the cinematography, but for the most part, I did like the lighting. I did like the color grading. Um, but I'll mention in regards to the uh, camera work in a little bit. But those are things I liked, and they were pretty consistent. And I did think that some of the brutal kills were effective. But here's the thing. The movie gets very repetitive real quick. Although there are some kills that are honestly pretty interesting to say the least those kills honestly get repeated a lot those kills honestly it's very simplistic it's like you'll have a character get like so their head smashed in or stabbed it just it gets old real fast and it's like if the movie is heavily relying on the violence factor then that's an issue because there's nothing really that kind of differentiates it from other movies that you've seen in the franchise and i'm saying that if someone that's only seen five now so again keep that in mind because when the movie tries to focus on the plot or the characters, it falters for sure. Because here's the thing. You have characters from the 2018 Halloween movie that were okay in terms of development. They were developed enough to where you cared about what happened to them by the end. But they are sidelined for the most part in this one. And the characters that are pretty much background characters of the first one, they're in the forefront of this one. And in addition to that, they added other characters too that in my eyes were previous ones from other from the other entries of the franchise at least that's what i would assume and they try to develop them in a way that feels very very forced i'm not gonna lie the first act was very hard to watch there was a lot of humor that just missed the mark very heavily in addition to all the exposition early on really really was cringeworthy i i was like sitting here saying to myself 
Oh no, what, why, why? What are they doing? Like, the movie is start, end, start, end. It, it just, it never really gets going. It doesn't get going until the end, and then by the end, it's like, okay, the movie's ending, and it's like, you have to wait a year to see what happens. So, it's one of those things where I, if I had to make an assessment, I would say that I feel like the director and the writers don't really know 100% where to take this next one, and I have a feeling that that's probably why they ended it the way they did, because it's like, where do you end it? At this point, where do you? When someone is unkillable, how, are you, how do you end this? And I think that the point is, is that it's never going to end. And it's like there are always going to be Halloween movies and there's always going to be profits to be made. But at the same time, again, I get that from in terms of a marketability perspective. But in terms of an actual film perspective, that's an issue for myself because it leaves very, very little in terms of the stakes. And honestly, I'm fine if the movie has low stakes, but you need to have stuff to actually care about. Kills aren't enough, and I get it that this is a franchise that's ingrained with kills, but that's not why a lot of people love it. It's something that's obviously like a cherry on top, but a lot of people do care about the characters. A lot of people do care about the allure, the score. So it's like to have it where those things kind of get sidelined and brushed aside. I don't know. For me, it was just kind of like something that I wasn't a big fan of. Kills alone were not something that I personally am able to say, yeah, great job because even those feel kind of repetitive and on top of that some of those kills you can't even tell what's going on like it's like michael j fox film did it sometimes that's what i meant with the cinematography I, I like the lighting and i like the color grading but i just wasn't the biggest fan of sometimes with the camera angles and in addition to that the camera work it was very shaky you couldn't really tell a lot of times what was happening and it's an r-rated film so it's like why are they doing this maybe it's low budget but it's a higher budget than the first one the first 2018 one so it was very confusing, honestly. I, I, I was taken aback by that. And in addition to that, speaking of the cinematography, you have it where the 2018 one, and honestly the 1978 one, they have it where the camera actually lingers on shots for quite a while. And there's a lot of visual storytelling that's going on. It lets you soak up the environment and it makes the environment feel like a character. Here, Haddonfield didn't feel like a character because the characters just wouldn't shut up. There were so many times where characters just kept on talking, 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 and they would repeat themselves. Like, it's like, it ends tonight, it ends tonight, it ends tonight. And guess what? It didn't end tonight. The audience gets blue balls and, it, you know, it's like, it's... Very frustrating. It is. And I'm not just saying it's like, oh, it ended on a cliffhanger, so I don't like it. It's like, no, it ended on a cliffhanger. In addition to that, I just didn't really care anything that was going on. So it's a very frustrating sequel. It really is. Are the ingredients there? For sure. But overall, I can't lie. I was disappointed by this movie. And, you know, I got to say, Halloween Kills, I'll be giving a two out of five star rating, which, yeah, doesn't get hot sauce rating. So, guys, again, I don't like reporting back. I'm disappointed, but. Here I am. Uh, I, if you guys do like this movie, which I have a feeling based on the audience that I saw it with, I feel like audiences will. Let me know. What did you like about this movie? I'm, I'm very curious. Genuinely speaking, I am curious. Let me know down below. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching with the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.